Good afternoon. Um, nothing like a very uh, light topic of corporate transparency and corporate law uh, to summarize the, uh, the session. Um, right, so um, thank you for the introduction. I come from the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy in the UK. Uh, so our department has the policy responsibility for the creation and operation of a company structure by an individual. Uh, we also have a responsibility for the framework of responsible operation of business. Now my specific area is uh, beneficial ownership transparency or simply corporate transparency. Um, so um, I believe that uh, in Trinidad and Tobago at the moment this uh, particular area is uh, very topical because the um, company, uh, company's amendment bill has gone in front of the parliament and part of this bill contains the proposals on beneficial ownership transparency. So, um, why is it important to have transparency in, in uh, corporate landscape? Uh, knowing who ultimately owns and controls um, companies plays an important role uh, in the global fight against corruption, money laundering and terrorist financing. It can assist law enforcement um, in the investigations of alleged criminal behavior and can also act as a deterrent. Uh, civil society organizations make uh, use of public beneficial ownership registers and regularly publish their findings um, and um, provide um, evidence of uh, money laundering or um, provide examples of um, companies that have been used in money laundering uh, networks. But transparency is also good for the economy. Um, individuals and uh, businesses can access public registers of beneficial ownership to identify who they are ultimately doing business with. Openness and transparency in company ownership promotes trust in the business environment. Uh, this was one of the important drivers um, for the creation of the public beneficial ownership register in the United Kingdom. Now, I will give a very brief overview um, of um, the history of our register, and um, I will uh, very quickly go through the uh, recent findings of our research into its um, uh, implications, and then I will turn to the wider picture. In the UK, the beneficial ownership register uh, of companies is uh, called the People with Significant Control uh, Register, a very snappy title. Uh, the PSC register um, is um, one of the first ones in the world and the first one in G20. So this is one of the first publicly accessible beneficial ownership registers. It is held and maintained by Companies House, so this is the UK's registrar of companies. We legislated in 2015 to establish the register and in 2016 it went live. Within a year, in 2017, it was fully populated. So beneficial ownership information is held alongside um, other core corporate information such as uh, the company's address, um, the directors, the shareholders, um, and the annual accounts that they have to file. This information is contained uh, in a searchable format, so um, this is actually e easily um, uh, searched for by anybody. Um, so public, um, the, the reason why it's public, um, um, also, it basically allows individuals to access the register and see if there are any um, discrepancies uh, with what they, um, uh, the information they hold. The majority information um, filed by companies uh, at the moment in the UK is um, digital. So briefly to touch upon the requirements on companies. Um, companies have to identify their PSC, so who is ultimately the, um, in control of the company. Uh, they have to confirm their details, so this is their uh, name, their um, address, um, what is the nature of their control over the company. Uh, then they have to record this information in their own beneficial ownership register. And then they have to provide it to the central register of companies, the um, uh, to company's house. Now this information can be useful, but if it is not kept up to date, um, this um, provides limited um, value. 
So therefore, um, companies have to update this information within 40, 14 days of change and record this on their own PSC register and then provide this information to the uh, central registry within a further of 14 days. Um, now, in the first year, we achieved 97% compliance, so 97% of companies provided their beneficial ownership information. Um, and um, we are currently evaluating the, um, the effects of the register, um, although we are still finalizing our assessment and analysis of the results, I can share some details with you today. So as it stands today, 99.3% of companies, and that's 3.8 million companies in the UK, have filed their information on, the, on their beneficial owners, and they have provided 4.9 million names of PSCs. So the register is um, substantial in number, uh, in, in, in size. Um, we have surveyed uh, a number of uh, classes of users of the data. Um, so primarily we're looking at uh, civil society organizations, uh, law enforcement, um, financial institutions, um, and the public and businesses. So just to kind of go back very quickly to um, compliance. Um, the, the success in compliance rates um, is really down to companies' house um, working really hard to um, ensure that um, companies understand the requirements uh, that have been introduced. And it's also very important um, that they pursue any cases of non-compliance. Um, so uh, if companies do not uh, realize that they are required to comply, um, they, they might have to be um, uh, chased for that. So Companies House have issued some 100,000 letters uh, to companies uh, where they did not have PSC information. And they continue to pursue around 35,000 companies. So out of the total register of 4 million, um, at the moment we're looking at 35,000 um, companies still need um, um, help in compliance. Now, of course, um, these efforts uh, can only go so far. Um, and in cases of persistent on, or willful non-compliance, um, and where the public interest um, um, tests are met, um, cases can be referred for prosecutions. At the moment, uh, there are 331 criminal proceedings that have been issued to directors, out of which uh, 58 convictions have been secured. Now, moving on, um, looking at the uses of the register. So this information is there. Uh, what do we, uh, what kind of use is being made of this information? Because, of the, um, because the information is accessible to all, uh, it makes it harder for illicit activities to be hidden behind layers of secret companies. And uh, the imagined com conclusions of our review um, is that the register is, useful, is a useful source of information um, for financial institutions, law enforcement, and very crucially for businesses themselves. So law enforcement, um, they use this um, PSC register as one of the sources of beneficial ownership register. Um, and Companies House have worked um, with law enforcement agencies to um, show how the information, uh, what information they have on companies and how this information can be useful um, for um, investigations. And this, um, these efforts have um, increased um, inquiries and, and help questions to Companies House from an average of 11 requests per month to um, 200 requests per month at the moment. So as for businesses, our research suggests that um, regular small and medium-sized businesses um, value the information on the register highly. It helps them to identify who it is that they're doing business with and um, who is behind the company that they're looking to sign a contract with. Higher levels of trust um, um, is also good for commerce. We see very high um, use of data in terms of numbers. So the PSC register is, the, the, the web version of it is accessed around 500,000 times a month. 
So that's comparing to the um, uh, 2.2 billion times a year that the overall company's register has been accessed at the, mo accessed at the moment. So this is, um, many eyes are viewing the data uh, every day. But not only that, uh, civil society organizations and um, um, any um, uh, journalists who are looking to um, understand patterns of corporate ownership in the UK can uh, download the information in bulk. Um, and at the moment, um, 350 times a month, uh, this, is, this is being done. Now let's move on to future work. So um, what does it all mean? Uh, the Financial Action Task Force uh, has recently uh, evaluated the UK uh, in terms of our framework for um, uh, prevention of money laundering, um, terrorist financing. And um, um, uh, the British High Commissioner mentioned this, um, uh, this recent evaluation. Overall, uh, the conclusions um, show that um, the UK has uh, a strong framework. However, there have been a few recommendations um, where they identified room for improvement. One of these um, is the um, need to ensure accuracy information. So companies' house have already um, got systems in place to um, check the information that they receive. Um, so these are automatic checks. And also, um, around 300 individuals are checking this information to ensure it complies with uh, company law, that it's um, valid, um, that it's complete. And of course, uh, when it comes to the public nature of our register, uh, we receive um, information on any discrepancies, anything that the public uh, identify as being uh, suspicious or incorrect. But of course, um, when we are looking at um, multiple databases that um, government departments um, hold, uh, cross-checking between these um, different databases can help in identify uh, discrepancies and identify any potential errors. So we are looking to um, utilize uh, all different sources of uh, beneficial ownership information and we're looking at options of how we can increase um, accuracy of information and increase um, the, um, the usefulness of the information that is uh, on the register. Transparency of um, company ownership is uh, increasingly seen as uh, a global issue and it requires a I can hear myself better now, sorry. Uh, uh, and it requires a global response to eliminate um, uh, secrecy that provides safe haven for corrupt money and for um, um, allows money laundering. So this is why the UK supports the Open Ownership Initiative and uh, supports the collection of information into the Global Open, open Ownership Register. We are also a member of the Beneficial Ownership Transparency Network, which was launched in July last year. So this is a group of countries who are either looking to implement Beneficial Ownership Registers or who are looking to um, improve the systems they have in place already. Last year, we announced a new international campaign to make public beneficial ownership registers a global norm by 2023. And this includes uh, greater technical assistance um, to developing countries. We're looking to work through multilateral organizations such as FATF, uh, or Financial Action Task Force, um, EITI, uh, G20, and OECD to promote um, public uh, access to um, company ownership information. Thank you.